Hey everybody, I'm Brittany Howard. I'm a diamond, but I'm so excited to introduce another diamond, a very special diamond who's near and dear to my heart on this call tonight. And that is Diamond Senior Gold, Rebecca Folks. Say hi, Rebecca. Hey y'all. Hey, hey. <laughs> okay, so I have to introduce Rebecca before we jump in here. So where do I even start? Okay, so I've looked up to Rebecca for years and years and years. What year did you join, Rebecca? 2013. Okay, what nine month? Years. Um, July. I just okay. had nine years. Yep. Okay, so I I joined September of the same year. But anyways, I remember just from the beginning, just always looking up to Rebecca. So she's definitely the type of person that makes you think, well, if she's doing this, if she's in this company and doing this kind of network marketing thing, it's clearly a good thing to do. So she, I've followed her for years and years and years. Um, she had no idea who I was, but that was okay. But she has impacted me in more ways than I can count um, all of these years. And I just recently had the privilege of connecting with her when I got on the advisory board. So she's also on the advisory board. She's also been a jewel trainer. She speaks at convention, pretty sure every year. Um, she's just fantastic, fantastic trainer. And she's a pretty much a genius when it comes to all things marketing and social media and things like that. So if you're not following her, you should, because I'm pretty sure she's number one in the company right now for selling reset welcome packs. I'm pretty sure she's sold over 30 at this point, at least 30. How many have you sold, Rebecca? A little over 30. Okay. All right. So she's crushing it with reset welcome, but, but she's always great at sales. Okay. So just the way, and if you fought, if you like read her posts and follow her in her story and stuff, you can see why, just like the way she words things. I don't know how she does it. I wish I could be in her brain, but she just makes you want to do things. So anyways, and also the wisdom. Can we please talk about the wisdom? Because that's what drew me to Rebecca. She loves the Lord. Very important to me. And just always sharing wisdom. And even the way she trains, it's not just like, here's how to sell things. It's just, it's more like, here's how to sell it with grace and poise. I feel like that's how she does it. So anyways, she just has so much wisdom. So we've just been connecting lately and I would venture to say she has become one of my closest friends. I'm very thankful for her. God just brings people into your life in seasons. And so very thankful for Rebecca. And we talk about all things, not just marketing, um, which I really could learn a lot from her on, but just parenting and theology and just what have you, all things in, in life. And so very appreciative that she's willing to take the time out to be on our call tonight. I'm gonna ask her some questions that you guys get to benefit from hearing her answers. Oh, and she's very successful. I forgot to say that. She is a diamond and she's also a senior gold on her re-entry. She's basically just amazing all the way around. So Rebecca, and here comes Molly. Come to say hi, hopefully. I'm so glad everyone needs to see Molly at least once a day. <laughs> I can't even believe those words you said. That was like the nicest thing ever. I don't, I don't even know where to say. I'm so honored to be on y'all's call. I've told Brittany this. I've told Christina. I've told Michelle. I've told Emily. There is just a, an element of quality on y'all's team, and I'm constantly drawn to y'all's team calls, your trainings. I mean, and the fact that on a Monday night, y'all have over a hundred people on your team call, people saying, I'm showing up for this. I'm showing up to take time out of my night at nine o'clock to learn more, to be vested, to be with my people. Like that is just, you're doing the things. And so I'm just, I'm so honored to, to be here with y'all. So to glean all the nuggets from y'all as well. So thank you for having me. Well, we're so grateful that you're here. Um, and I am especially in more ways than one, but okay. So tell us your story, Rebecca. Tell us how you went diamond. How long did it take you? All that jazz. What do you think made you successful? Well, I found network marketing, um, 
more like 2010. Well, actually, when I was in college, I was nannying for a lady and sometimes she would pay me in Mary Kay. And I found out later she'd signed me up for Mary Kay. So apparently that was my first go at it. So don't do that. Don't do that. But I still was really drawn to the industry for a bunch of reasons. One, I saw women in my town that were married to um, executives and they were professionals uh, themselves, the women, and they were sometimes, you know, in the medical field or they were this or they were that. And they were women that I really respected and admired and they were doing network marketing and they were driving the cars and I would go to the home meetings and the parties and I would love the products that they were selling. And I loved how they talked to people and how they helped people. And I loved the community. And I were going to a couple like opportunity meetings and my sister and I um, got together and we said, we want to do that network marketing thing. We, and we joined for the business back in 2010. And that was a different company. Um, and we did great. Uh, it was a home party company. I did not use any social media. I got to probably senior gold level, which was paying my mortgage. So I was calling that a winner, winner chicken dinner for a someone that had left college, had two little babies at home. And during that time to, to go out and do parties at night, was welcomed because I got out of the house. So I actually really liked doing that. I liked being around people and all those things. However, I got pregnant with my third baby and I was so sick and I could not <laughs> leave my bathroom, much less my house to go do the home parties. And so I thought I'm going to put network marketing on the shelf for a little while, but I'm going to do this again. So fast forward about three years and I had moved from Arkansas to a really tiny town in Pennsylvania. And I'd been there about a year and my youngest was probably two and a half. And I thought, I'm going to do that again. I thought that was fun. I was seeing some people from my hometown, um, Suzanne Clinton and Elizabeth James and Melissa Darby and some women drinking this pink drink and getting the cars. And I was like, I can do that. I was like, I'm on social media. I knew that from my past company, it was all very naturally based. And so I knew I wanted to be some, in something that had natural products that were consumable um, and that I could feel good about selling. I had moved to Pennsylvania and I, I mean, everybody was making kombucha on their counters and like colloidal silver on their, like making it and, you know, given the SCOBY things at church, like I was trying to fit in with the natural people, anybody. And I did not have a lot to offer. So I just listened to a lot of things. And that's where I really started getting interested in natural health. And so when I showed them these probiotics, and this was a tiny little town where people were like, the combined household income was less than $40,000 a year. It was a, a really rural town. And these people were paying like $100 a month for a probiotic. And that they, they were so vested in their health. And when they looked at our probiotics and our, they said, this is really good stuff. I was like, let's, let's sell it. Let's sell it. And so I can remember standing in my, I would have these, you know, opportunity meetings and trainings and, um, I would be in my living room. I'd be like, my name's Rebecca. I'm a silver ambassador and I'm going to show you how to go diamond. And I, from the very beginning, had so much enthusiasm, so much belief, and so much like, why would you not do this? It honestly was about two years into my journey before I even really had a why. I just kept thinking, why would you not do this. And that really is something for me that I, I feel really strongly about that. I want there to be a shift in the network marketing industry where people don't tell you I, things like, Oh, I never thought I would do that. I blocked my friends. I never wanted anything to do with that. But instead they're saying, Oh no, I know those women that do network marketing and I want to be a part of that. I've, I've hung out with some of those ladies and they are quality and they are smart and they are driven and I want to be a part of that. And it makes me emotional because I, that is like relationships are really important to me. 
And um, I see the hearts of women that do this and they really are trying to do something amazing for their families. And so often we do find a product that we see is working and we have all these amazing stories and testimonies. And so we're so excited to share. And I think there's such a misunderstanding of the network marketing industry. So anyway, I, it probably took me, I, I just started calling people whenever I signed up. I was like, I know this drill. You just start calling people. So I didn't even really know all the things yet. I don't even know that I'd gotten my welcome pack, but I just started calling. And I think it took me a month to go silver, but then I hit silver. And I think it took me six months to go gold. And, um, but after I hit gold, I did pick up some speed and some leaders. And every time that I would hit a new rank, um, I, I was always really looking for business builders. I was always someone that was actively reaching out to people about the business and very enthusiastic, very full of belief. Matter of fact, uh, my husband and I and a bunch of friends were out at a restaurant on a date night a couple weeks ago and a couple came to our table, a girl that I'd just gotten her signed up on the reset and her husband said, you know, we we're sitting there at dinner. And he said, I looked up something on your Facebook. And he said, I kind of accidentally hit the message thing. And I looked back, <laughs> 2013, you had sent me a message to this man. I sent a message and said all the reasons why I, what I saw in him and how it was a great business opportunity. And I thought he could, you know, all these things. I was messaging people about the business. And something that I do think makes a big difference was it was so much less about Plexus or about like the company or about network marketing or about the products. But I always have really focused on what I see in the people and why they would be great at it. And so once they were interested and they kind of saw that I believed in them, then I would start telling them, here's the products and here's the um, the business opportunity. And so, uh, through that, um, almost all of my jewel leaders that I brought into the company were people that I basically cold messaged. I mean, I, I say cold messaged, they were in my warm market, but I reached out to them and painted the picture of the opportunity, um, and usually pursued for months and months that they were not an immediate, like, okay, I'll do that right now. Um, that I, I kept messaging them and something that I, you know, I've learned, um, through trial and error is when you do follow up with people, it's always to bring new information. And so it's not that you're, um, you're saying, Hey, I'm just checking in. <laughs> hey, it's me again. You know, just, or things like, let me know. And just checking in, but it's always like, Hey, I saw this testimony and this is why it reminded me of you or, Hey, I saw this on, you know, look what Plexus now are on number this and the Inc. 500 or the direct selling news. And I'm just so impressed and they're continuing to do big things. And I wanted you to see this or look what Dave Ramsey is saying about network marketing or whatever. I always was bringing new information. Um, that would find, and then typically it would be something, you know, I would reach out and then they would say, okay, I'd kind of wear them down. One of my jewels tells me that she actually ran from me in Target one time because I was, uh, which I'm not a like a pressure person, but she said, she was like, I, she tells that all the time. I'm like, that makes me sound like a stalker, but I would, people that I really knew could do this. Um, I was persistent, not to everybody, because I don't have capacity for that, but to my like tippy top primo people, I would keep going to them. So um, I think I went Emerald in about 13 months and then um, Sapphire a few months after that and Diamond a couple months after that. Um, in between Emerald and Sapphire, I went through a divorce and I'd grown up in a, um, a really strong family and uh grew up I think on my first date I said just so you know I'm gonna be a stay-at-home mom like that was my dream that was all I'd ever wanted to be and so from you know being 20 years old up until 28 that's what I did and so then I found myself as a as an emerald um with with three little kids no child support no alimony and um I could take care of my 
kiddos. And that definitely gave me a why. <laughs> so that's when I was, up. Uh, I was kind of doing it for fun because I mean, the, the, my husband at the time was successful and was, you know, making great money. Um, but I was again, just like, Oh, well, let's just keep doing this. But that's when I started getting up before my kids were up and stayed up late at night and sending lots more messages. Um, because I had a lot to do and I'm just so grateful for Plexus, um, and what it has allowed. And then fast forward a little bit later, um, and one of the girls on my team had a guy on her team and she said, I think y'all should go on a blind date. And so Eli was my level three. So we jokingly say that he married up and um, we got married six years ago and a little bit less than a year ago, we had a baby. So when they say that tagline, what if this could change everything? It really can. It really, really can. Um, so that is basically my story with Plexus. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that Eli married up. Okay. Um, so I have questions. First okay. of all, um, so you said you were, did you say you were in Pennsylvania? I was. Okay. So you were in Pennsylvania, but your upline was in Arkansas, right? Okay. So you're over here like hosting events, calling people on the phone. Like how, how did you overcome the obstacle of not having a local upline or somebody who's there holding your hand or doing events with you or for you um and all of those things how can you speak to that well I mean on one hand now I have a lot of team local but we're so much more connected on our phones than we are in-person events so with technology and Marco Polo and FaceTime and Zooms and all the things you can definitely, and we had, um, actually at that time you would call in to a conference call. You wouldn't even see him. You would call, I in to the call. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so we did do that. Um, and my sponsor, she would sometimes when I would sign up a business builder, if it was someone in Arkansas, my sponsor would like take her to lunch and kind of connect sometimes if there was someone there but as far as I mean in Pennsylvania where I did that was the harder part was building the relationships with the people in Pennsylvania because it was a really small town but it wasn't my small town you know what I mean and small town people could be like hey thanks so glad you're here not really okay bye and no one um there we like were part of a church plant out there you'd say like do y'all have like women's Bible studies or things? And they would be like, what? <laughs> Absolutely not. So there was not, it was not a lot of community. Um, but I am persistent with relationship building. And so I would uh, just, I am a connector. So I do ask a lot of questions. I was pursuing people, whether that was in, you know, on Facebook or um, go into different you know, meetings, trying to meet people. And really it was, I, I mean, I was up there for a year and a half before I did Plexus. I'm just a, now it was with intentions to connect with people. Um, but it, it was different than being in your home network. Uh, social media allowed me to still connect with my at home network um, that, but anyway. So, yes, I, I just love that you took ownership of your biz. Like you weren't waiting for an upline to come do all the things for you or with you. You just took ownership to the point of calling people on the phone. So that's my next question. What did you say? Like, hey, girl, I had Z, had Probably nothing, good. nothing good. Yeah, nothing good. Got an opportunity good. for you. <laughs> By the way, I did that, too. I did that the same thing. The first person I called on the phone was my ex-mother-in-law oh well that was great yeah. I feel like it's extra brave I feel like I should get points yeah for that yeah did you do that did you call oh wait no no you were still married at that point I was still married. okay good husband of okay so uh so what did you actually say I am curious like when you'd call people at home, were you nervous and I what you was just like hey I've I see this as an opportunity um, I, I think same thing that I would send in a cold message, like, Hey, Brittany. Okay. 
I have found this opportunity. I'm looking at this. I know you can do this. I mean, I would talk to them. It was definitely not a flip chart or anything again. And also people ask me all the time, like, what do you say to people? And it's never anything scripted. It's nothing that I could say, oh, I just say this, like it's copied and pasted. It's always, if I'm going to someone about the business, I'm telling them or something that I see in them that would make them great at this and something that I think this could help them with that they have confided in me or told me like, what if this could help with this? Um, so what and, do you, what do you see in somebody that makes you think they'd be great at this? Um, someone that is a connector, someone that's positive, someone that's an achiever, someone that has an affinity for natural health someone that is active on social media, someone that is a leader, someone that does not have a victim mentality, uh, someone that has gone through things and they have overcome, um, someone that's charismatic, that people that are already successful in other things where it looks like this could be a puzzle piece. Um, I tell you who I don't go after. I do not go after people that are sick and that are co or like like that are constantly everything's wrong I am not trying to save people I'm not trying to use this as a way to say like I'm looking for people that are on a forward track and that they can add this in I also have seen some of the people that have seen a lot of success on my team are typically busy people and you don't go after them because you think oh they're so busy um, but I think all of my jewel legs were working full-time jobs with multiple children uh, when they became a lot of times entrepreneurs um, that were also doing other side gigs, but they knew how to, um, to prioritize their schedule and time management and they saw opportunity. Um, and so I, a lot of times busy people. Um, so those are some people that I would reach out to. I love it. That's so, so, so good. Okay. So I love also your confidence and belief in network marketing specifically and how you joined for the business and how you just love the whole industry from the beginning. Has there anything that has happened along the way that has maybe hurt your belief in network marketing? And if so, how do you respond to things like that? You're saying, I want to change this like stigma. So obviously you're aware of a stigma um, and it's near and dear to your heart because I saw you that that produced tears when you were talking about that. So obviously things have happened. So how do you respond when people say negative things or your belief has been hurt or whatever? I think something that is just a personal thing for me is when I feel misunderstood like about different things. And so that's just a, a personal thing. And so when it's one thing to get left on read, you know, or seen in your messages. But when someone says something negative back to you that you know, um, that is hard. I'm thinking specifically of a girl that she was um, several years older than me and like, you know, in high school and all that. And our families were really good friends. She may have even like babysat me, but we went on family vacations. And I mean, we were close, actually. <laughs> Uh, the house that I'm in was their childhood home. We bought from, I mean, I, literally my parents' best friends, they built the house and I, I've known her my whole life. And I reached out to her at one point and I said, um, would you, and told her all the reasons she'd be amazing at this. She was a designer for a big department store, um, all their jewelry. She's super creative, just cool in every way, right? And I can remember where I was standing when I called her and um, when I told her how amazing she would be at this and um, like she could stay, she had just had a new baby. It was like, you could stay at home with your baby. Um, and I, 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 I just was telling her all these things and it was all of a sudden dead quiet. And she said, I would never do that. Like I would never do that. And I don't want to stay home. And I can't even imagine doing anything like that ever. <laughs> I don't know how I got to the floor, but at some point I were looking down and going, somehow I've made it to the floor. <laughs> and I, I was just like, okay, thanks. Gotta go by. Um, and that one got me. That one got me. 
Um, especially because it was again a family friend that like we do holidays together and things like that. And I was like, how am I gonna like see her and all the things? And so I'm sure I cried about it for a minute and thought, are people thinking that I'm like, um, you know, doing something? So a, a little tidbit about my story um, is that I am from a really um, affluent area. And I went to a, a really expensive private school. Everyone, I, I grew up, I mean, thinking if you went to college, you're going to make six figures because how in the world would you live if you didn't make six figures? Um, I did find out for years and years exactly how you do that. Um, but I, I, so th I do think there was even more of a stigma over network marketing um, but I will tell you that years later, it did take years later, people that still, they may have ordered product for me, but have never been interested in the business. And they tell me all the time, I am so impressed by what you do. And or in like things like I have people tell me at least once a month, a random person that I will see and just say, I see what you're doing. And I am so proud of you. And so, whereas I'm not saying everyone says that, but I will say there are redemption stories in there too, but people saying mean things to me or posting things that you know are passive aggressive, and then you write a story in your head that that story is about you. Um, that is that can be a belief killer. That can not a killer, but um, you know, Herder. a stabber. <laughs> yeah. Yes. See, this is why Rebecca is great at marketing because I said hurt her, and she said stabber, which clearly <laughs> is superior vocabulary. Okay. So, just so we establish that um <laughs> okay so the next thing I was gonna ask you was what about like hurdles you've had to overcome like what's been hard for you in this business uh everything um uh, besides <laughs> all the things you're good at <laughs> you know I, I really think for everything that you're good at there's something that can make that like an Achilles heel to you yeah. and so I think that I am really, I am very optimistic. I am, my sister the other day goes, I've never met anyone that's more glass half full than you are. And I do lean that way. And uh, with, I mean, I'm very realistic, but I'm just constantly optimistic about the future. And um, with like, uh, and so with that, I can be really flexible and adaptable a really hard thing for me is I get really excited about all the things that are out there. And so focus can be hard for me. Um, and I think in Plexus, there are so many things that you could be doing. And there's always going to be a Monday motivation or a training call or a, you know, a comment on a thread that makes you go, oh, that's why she's successful. That's because she's doing that. And so then it's like squirrel. And I would want, and I'm, I am a high connector. So I was talking to all these different people that had all their different things that were good for them. And so not uh, something that can be hard is, and that can make me occasionally uh, inconsistent. And so that could be hard. And one time I heard, um, this is just a snippet, but I was at a Bob Heilig virtual summit thing and he said consistency is a belief issue and I like Christy Hall and I were there together and I looked at her and I was like I don't believe that consistency is a belief issue and it messed with me and I just kept looking back at that at my notes and I looked past it and finally I um I wrestled with it until I went he's right he's right consistency is a belief issue because if you really believe that what you're doing and where you're going is that uh, what you're doing is going to get you where you want to go then you are going to show up every day and do that full out and it's showing your belief it should be a red flag oh I'm not totally bought into this if you are struggling with consistency because you're not really believing if I do this IPA worksheet or this winning the day deal or whatever it is th and do my reach outs or social media posting, all that, is that really going to get me to where I want to go? And so um, that, that will change some things when you start to go, 
am I, am I really bought in here? Um, also with leadership, because I am, uh, I'm very high empathy and I am high connector that sometimes it's hard to lead your friends and to give feedback um, especially if it's not, if you haven't set up situations to have conversation, coaching calls, or, um, uh, just a time where that makes sense to, to pour into, I, I am very direct. Um, but I, sometimes I'm going to choose a relationship over business most of the time, which my team has excellent retention because we are very connected and people love each other. So, but as far as sometimes that creating an environment to say hard things, um, or things that just could rub a little, you know, um, that can be hard for me. Um, and that can be a plus and a minus, but I do think that's something too. I'm sure there's many other things that are, I, I, I think there are simple systems that create success here, but I do think that there's a lot of things that can make it hard too, but it's, do you believe in where you're going? Do you believe that the path that's set out is going to get you there? And I've had to look comparison. I literally have said, I've never been insecure in my life. My, I, that's just not been my hang up until I got into Plexus. And it was like, all of a sudden, all the people that are good at things that I'm good at are better. And they're like freaking Brooke Hemingway that is willing to work without food or sleep for, you know, <laughs> days and days on end. And I'm not, I'm not. And so the comparison game will eat you up. And so that has been something that I've had to dig into and go, okay, what am I good at? What do I know how to do? How did I get here and, and keep implementing those things? Mm, that's so good. So I asked that because I just want everybody to see that you do have struggles. Um, even though you look like Miss America and basically sneezed out diamond, um, you do. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I know you worked super hard to get to where you're at. No, I just want everybody to see that no matter how successful you are, you got struggles, you got problems, everybody got problems. And, um, even, even people who are highly successful. So when you said that you realized that your lack of consistency in certain areas was a belief issue, what did you realize you were believing and how did you change it? Um, I think I believed that I wasn't going to be able to find new people or that, um, maybe at times like the momentum that I was seeing would always be there. And so that I could just kind of, oh, I double ranked this month or, oh, these leaders on my team are killing it. And so I can kind of slough off some of my personal activity because I, you know, I'm now on the gravy train or whatever. And then poof, an emerald can leave for another company or poof, this, you know, jewel leg over here has a bunch of, you know, tips with each other. And so they're just going to sit down for a little while or poof, this over here happens. Um, and we all know that attrition happens every single month. Like people just for whatever reason, they fall off. And so if you're not constantly adding in at any level, y'all read the slight edge, like you're either going forward or backward. You're not just going to sit there. And so that's what keeps me going and continuing to reach out, continuing to post, continuing to build is it's not, I mean, Brittany, we've even talked about this. It's not even that it would change my standard of living or that it would, you know, do a lot of things to my day to day, but I do feel like it's, personally, it's insulating my investment in Plexus. Um, and I really see a difference about when I am in personal activity, how I'm able to help my team. Like no one wants to hear from a history teacher. Well, back in 2014, when we were posting Facebook statuses every day, like no one 
that's irrelevant. Like they want to know, no, what are you doing this month with this incentive? Or what have you done in the last few months when this situation happened? And so I, I think that makes me a stronger leader. And so that, um, that's one reason is I just like, I could see a lack of effectiveness if I wasn't doing what I needed to be doing. Um, and I, <laughs> I think Brenda Martin, you know, she's got the 11 kids and she says activity cures everything. So if you are frustrated, if you're feeling like you have a lack of belief, if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling whatever, activity will cure everything. Like if you tell me that you go and do the, one of those winning the day worksheets every day for 30 days or a, whatever your team's kind of IPA worksheet is, and you do something like that every day for 30 days. And you do it effectively, not copying and posting, pasting other people's posts, but you're being thoughtful, you're being um, creative, you're looking at some of your strengths and you're, you know, posting and you're reaching out, you're doing all those things. If you do all those things for 30 days, you are going to see progress and that activity will cure what ails you. And so that's been something that always has helped me. That's good. All right. So what next question, what is your favorite part of your Plexus business? You know, I mean, what is there? I mean, on one hand, it's so hard. Like there are things that can make it hard because it's, you're doing it all. Like you're wearing all the hats, you know, you're having to be good at, I mean, you think you're having to be good at a lot of things, but on the other hand, it's like, I love my life. And I would have said that at Senior Ruby too. Like, I mean, that's when I started like seeing a life change. And I think that I could have been able to take care of my kids and stuff at that level too. But I, um, I, I love that I wake up and I talk to women that inspire me and encourage me. And I love helping people. And I love um, that I work a few hours a day and make hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And when my kids say, Hey, I want to do this. And Hey, I want to do that. Um, I can say yes, or I can say no, but it's not because of finances that I can't say no. It's because of just wisdom. And my mom says, look for things to say no to. So I'm looking for things to say no to sometimes. Um, and so I just, I, I literally walk around my house and I mean, I text my husband and I'll say, I'm just so grateful for our life and that I know that there is more opportunity here, that there's more to Plexus even than it is right now. And that you can be in a job and go, I think there's more here for me and that there's more here that I can look forward to and that I can help other people. Like that is really, really special. So, I mean, I love lately, like on the advisory board, the last year, the corporate people that have been coming into Plexus and connecting with some of them, it, there has been a very obvious up leveling in some of our C-suite and executive um, people. I've, you know, I've always thought we had nice people on staff and I've always gotten along with them and those kinds of things, but I'm like, oh, y'all are legit. I was at a meeting recently and it was like the entire C-suite, any like VP and above, and they were all telling their stories and their backgrounds and where all they'd worked and all these different things. And I was like, well, if we can't go to a billion dollars now, we, we ain't going, we ain't going because these people are top, top notch. So getting to see those things, like that's all, um, exciting and makes me optimistic for the future that is encouraging so would you say that all the work and the investment that you have put into this business would you say all the sacrifices that you've made was it worth it it was absolutely worth it it was absolutely worth it that's awesome all right so best tips for anybody on here who may be a silver aspiring to up level I would say find things to fuel your confidence and belief and then show up that you are confident and enthusiastic about what you have to offer. 
one thing that I've learned in just marketing and sales is that a lot of times when people are looking at what you have to offer, they've tried things in the past that have not worked. And so if you're saying you've got something for their gut health or their health problems or their weight loss or their finances, they've probably been let down in the past. And so if you come in kind of, I mean, I, I feel like I've seen some other people that it's worked for. I, I mean, maybe I think it might work. That is not going to cut it. Like, and I'm not saying you go in there hype, but that you are, you have a reason to why you believe. I remember watching diamond documentaries around the clock when I first started, like I would watch them in the bathtub. I would watch them when I was, uh, you know, getting ready for the day. I would watch them. It was like every Thursday that new ones would come out. And I just was fueling my belief and thinking if they can do it, why can I not? And I still meet people all the time that have never heard of Plexus. And, um, and I've signed up y'all last month. It was 30 people just in, um, it was 29 people in July. And most of those were Instagram people that I have no connection with that. I was just talking and they saw Plexus as, Oh, what is that? And tell me about that. And so there's a hundred percent people out there in small communities that have influence that have a niece that's going to blow it up on Instagram. And, but you have to be the one that is really sure of what you've got. And there are plenty of testimonies. Oh, and I, I think Brittany said this earlier when I sold, I had sold, I think eight or nine in, um, the end of June and then 20 of the resets that I sold in, uh, July, I sold by like the 8th or the 10th or something. Those 28 or so, those first ones that I sold, I had not even done the reset. It wasn't my testimony. It wasn't me saying, I tasted all this and I tried this and these are my results. It was just me saying, hey, look. And so let's say you haven't made money yet in Plexus or you don't have a big health testimony. You don't have to have that. That is just a thought that you keep thinking you can just point people to, hey, look at this. And I, I think you should. I think you should. I think you should keep opening the door. Oh, I just thought of another question. This is the last one, I promise. Okay. Okay. So I love what you said about how you didn't even do the reset yourself and it wasn't your results that you were even generating. Okay. So you have like, I don't know, like 15,000 or so followers on Instagram. What if somebody else has like same amount of followers but their marketing is not converting to customers. Like they go post the same way you post, but they're not getting new customers. What are your thoughts on that? Um, my first thought is, did they buy their followers? <laughs> Do they have a <laughs> like, If they have six likes, I'm thinking, well, those people are bots. Um, I'm thinking that you haven't built trust. And so... Y'all, I still feel silly sometimes when I'm on there and I'm just telling a story about what happened with one of my kids or um, something my mom told me that day. Or, I mean, I do the last, you know, couple of years, I've tried to be a little more aware of, okay, what am I saying that would be, it's not just, hey, look at my breakfast, but is helpful to people. But I do think, and I know we've heard this a million times about social media, but you are looking for people to feel that like, trust, like, no trust factor. And so with social media, um, for years, which is why like on Facebook would be, if you're just brand new, I would say I would be on Facebook because those people, you actually most likely have some type of real life relationship with. So you've already, I mean, majorly your influence is going to be a lot greater on Facebook than Instagram. Um, and influence to some of those people is going to be you comment on their kids' school pictures and you like their post or you reach out and say, oh, I tried your recipe. Like that's actually value to some people because they're thinking she notices me. Um, 
But I would think if all you're doing is posting about Plexus, well, that's a take. And so they're not, they're probably tuning that out because they don't know you. But if they know you, they feel like they know you and they know that you like to cook casseroles or you just love your little French bulldog too, or you love shopping at TJ Maxx or whatever it is. And they connect with you on, it's why every time you meet someone, you're like, oh, do you know so-and-so? Like you're always looking for common ground. And so when people feel like they have common ground with you, it builds trust so that they can trust you on something else. And so I would be thinking about how am I adding um, relatability factors or am I, you know, maybe you have an education page, are you teaching them or you're inspiring them, but what is it? And are they connecting with you? Go back and look at your last 15 posts. Where did you get the biggest response? That should tell you, um, where are people responding to you? What do they like to see from you and post more of that. And so that builds, um, trust. So then when you're like, Hey, I've got this reset. People are like, oh, I liked her chicken spaghetti recipe. I bet I'll like that reset too. And that sounds so silly, but I do think that there is truth to it. I do too. All right. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca. This was super, super valuable. I know this is going to be one that people watch over and over. The chat's blowing up already. I appreciate your time. Time's a million because I know it's crazy valuable. And everything you said tonight, so inspiring. And I love you. And I appreciate you. I loved being with y'all. Thank you for having me. All right. Good night, y'all.